Hi everyone, we're up to part 11 of this teaching series called the Holy Spirit and we've been looking at what it is to abide in Christ and we looked at the first aspect of this abiding is what does it mean to abide and in this next teaching we're going to look at who we are to abide in. You know it's very easy to say oh we're to abide in Jesus and yes that is the who. But there's such a dimension, there's such a profound reality to be discovered in this abiding in the personhood of Christ himself. You know, the reality is we can abide in many things. We can abide in earthly passions and earthly priorities. We can have our abiding in ourselves. We can have our abiding in other people, other lovers, other interests. And it is critical as a follower of Jesus Christ that you are abiding in Christ and Christ alone if you want this life that he promises us. And we're going to have a look through uh, some scriptures from John and John and 1 John because he was primarily the one that was teaching about this abiding life in Christ. The who is our Lord and Savior, the one who is eternal. And when we abide in the one who is eternal, then we're able to receive and live from an eternal life. It's simple, but it's profoundly deep and mysterious. 1 John 5.11 says this, And the testimony is this, that God has given us eternal life, and this life is in his Son. God, when he gave us his Son, gave us eternal life. And this very life is found in his Son. 1 John 1 2 and the life was manifested and we have seen and testify and proclaim to you the eternal life which was with the Father and was manifested to us once again John saw Christ in the Spirit and he proclaimed of this life he manifested this eternal life 1 John 5 verse 20 and we know that the Son of God has come and has given us understanding so that we may know him who is true. And we are in him who is true, in his Son, Jesus Christ. This is the true God and eternal life. These three passages of scriptures, to where there are more, testify that Jesus is eternal life. And when we abide in Jesus Christ, who is eternal life, we then become the recipients of this eternal life. And we live from an eternal life while we're on earth because we are abiding in the Son who is eternal life. The who is a person. Sorry, the who is a person. It's not an it. It's not a what. It's not a how. It's not a why. It's not a where. The who is is a person we are not to be found as i've said abiding in anything else but the person not even in god's principles not in a law not in a method or a form or a program a position a commodity but a living person we are to abide in the personhood of christ himself and christ alone and john wrote this in John 15, 4 to 5. He said, abide in me. These are the words of Jesus. And I in you. Abide in me and I in you. Can you hear the oneness there? As the branch cannot bear fruit of itself unless it abides in the vine. There's no fruit that's going to be produced in and through us unless we're abiding in the person, the vine the tree of life so neither you unless you abide in me i am the vine you are the branches he who abides in me and i in him is that oneness he bears much fruit for apart from me you can do nothing you know the power of oneness is declared in these verses here that christ and us together abiding in as we abide in Christ. The key to this abiding in him, the person, is having the true knowledge of Jesus Christ being revealed continuously to us. 
it's through this true knowing, this real knowing, this true knowledge, this living knowledge that changes us, that enables us to keep these eternal commandments. And we find ourselves as an outcome, just abiding in the person and having the life of the person flowing in and through us. Have a listen to 1 John 2, 3 to 6, because this passage proves that we're abiding in him when we have the outcome of this life. By this we know that we have come to know him if we keep his commandments. The one who says I have come to know him and does not keep his commandments is a liar and the truth is not in him. You see, we have to realize these commandments are eternal. Unless you're abiding in Christ, you'll never be able to keep the eternal commandments. You might think you do. You might even say you do. But everything is based from your perspective, your version of all that. So often what we say and what we live are two completely different realities. But we never recognize this and we never recognize the gap between what we say and what we do. And the reason for that is, is because we're not abiding in the person. We may be in everything else but forms of godliness, religious rituals and patterns, but not actually in the person. And so we say we know him, but we can't keep these commandments. And the Bible calls us a liar. And we know liars don't inherit the kingdom. It goes on, whoever keeps his word, there's a key. Whoever keeps his word, in him the love of God has truly been perfected. As you abide in the word, and the word abides in you, it's in you, it's not around you, it's in you, then love is being perfected, and you prove that you're a disciple. By this, we know that we are in him. The one who says he abides in him, ought himself to walk in the manner in which Christ walked. And Christ fulfilled, or Christ walked in this law of love. And then when we are abiding in Christ, keeping the commandment, we also fulfill the law of Christ, which is this eternal commandment to love with an eternal love, with an indestructible love, with a love that's 1 Corinthians 13, as we know, not our earthly love. And the final passage is 1 John 3, 24. The one who keeps his commandments abides in him and he Christ in him we know that we know by this that he abides in us so we know by the ability to keep these eternal commandments okay that Christ abides in us we in him by the spirit whom he has given us it is critical that the who is Jesus Christ we looked at the what last time we're now looking at the who and it's imperative we abide in the who. That we want to be able to come into the life he has for us. And then to be able to live a life that he has for us. Defined by love. So I pray this teaches you. I pray it encourages you. Gives you some insight. I want to give you some questions to ponder. Why is abiding in anything but Jesus so futile for our spiritual lives? Second question. What can we expect to receive if we are truly abiding in him what stops us from abiding in him and the last question is who can testify to the more than life in christ much fruit in him proving that you are his disciple so be encouraged if you want to drop me a line this is part 11 of the series look forward to part 12 and part 13 as this continues to grow as we look also at the why and the where and so on. Have a great day.